What is going on, guys? I'm Thunder Gaming here. We are here actually doing a podcast, and this is going to be part of a series that me and my friend do. Um, and hopefully, you guys enjoy. Uh, he can do his intro real quick, and then we can get on to the hot topic. I'm not a pure YouTuber, I'm new, so I'll just introduce myself by what I'm going to be going by. Uh, hey, everyone, future success, tire, and yeah, that's. Yeah, I don't have an intro, so it's it's not as cool and not as fancy as it is, but this will be one of the first things, or I think the very first thing I'll be posting on mine, and hope I'll be able to keep posting them thanks to Unsounder, so, yeah. Alright, cool, so... That, that's all I got. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so, I guess we can get into our first topic, which will be Spider-Man Far From Home teaser trailer. Yes, yes. Okay, I, I just have one thing I want to put out and I, i've already talked with a lot of my friends about this and so far they keep nobody wants to accept it because they've already it's already been said that oh far from home isn't taking place in the uh past it's taking place after the events of endgame when that eventually comes out but i think that just because of how nonchalant they are are i think that we're being lied to and that it is going to be taken before endgame could be wrong but nick fury's alive Peter Parker's alive, and neither of them cared they were just dead. I'm sa I'm calling it. That's true. Uh, I don't know. Me personally, I think it's actually before the whole Infinity War thing, um, because like Spider-Man and Nick Fury and everyone died in Infinity War, and they're back in this movie. So obviously, either some crazy unalignment like shit went down or this has to happen before infinity war yeah so one of the main reasons though i'm hoping that it takes place beforehand is mainly just because if, if this is taking place after and then it takes away like how valuable and how like the ending of infinity war really was because like what's the point of infinity war if Oh look, Endgame, and everyone's still alive because I just feel like they need to actually let some people stay dead. <laughs> That's true. Um, it kind of seems like every new intro, like of a character or whatnot, and if they die or anything, they somehow show up again. Um, wasn't it in Age of Ultron where uh, the one dude got stabbed in the stomach or oh, shit? One, uh, by Loki, and um, then he. I know what you're talking about. Um, and then he uh, came back alive or some shit in a TV yeah, show like drafted. a little while ago, but it was from Marvel. Oh yeah, uh, Coulson, Agent Coulson, and Agents of Shield. Yeah, yeah, yeah. because didn't Agents of Shield actually happen after, uh, Age of Ultron? Yeah, it happens after. No, no, no. You're thinking of the original Avengers when he got stabbed by Loki, but um, no, Coulson was dead at the ends of, of uh, just the regular original Avengers. Coulson was dead, but then at the beginning of the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., he was brought back to life by skin graphing and clone techno- It was- they, they explained it really weird, but no, he- Coulson was- However, the one reason that I'm fine with that one is mainly because they didn't bring him back in the movies. He was dead, everyone knew he was dead, and they, they kind of keep them separated, you know, but at the same time, it's- you know, we, we don't see Coulson in the movies anymore, so unless you actually keep up with the TV show as well, Coulson is dead by all accounts. So, I'm, I'm fine with that one. <laughs> not <laughs> gonna... Yeah, uh... I don't know, but... Alright, so we're kind of straying off of yeah, Far From Home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Back, back to Far From Home. Yeah. <laughs> Can we just point out, Jake Gyllenhaal... <laughs> he looked so... Uh, okay, okay, okay. Hear me out. He has that Mysterio suit on point. Low key though, and that hair? Come on, that shit don't fly. He's got a beard. He's got a beard. Come on, guys. <laughs> How can you not love Jalen Hall with a beard? You don't even give a fuck about anything else. You just do that beard. Come on, just yeah, whoa, beard. the beard. Beard though. What I would, do, what I would do for a beard like that? <laughs> oh my god. But no, low key or straight up, Marvel has been on point with these costumes. They really have. It's insane. They made. He um, had the Iron Man suit from um, Infinity War. 
Um, we had the Winter Soldier suit and the Winter Soldier Captain America suit. That was really nice looking. Um, we had Thor's new getup in Ragnarok. Spider-Man, all of his suits in general are looking great. But... Fucking amazing. Yeah. Especially in Spider-Verse. But... Sp eh. Well, no, like some of the, like, <laughs> no, some of the older suits that Spider-Man had, like in the comics and stuff, but they actually put them to life technically in Spider-Verse. But I don't know, just yeah, yeah, yeah. they're still looking pretty I, nice. I'm a huge comic buff, so I know all, I know where all these suits come from, a place of origin. But I don't know. so back to Far From Home. Um, I'm thinking those things that we see are either a the element or B Hydro Man and Magma Man. Both of those are lesser known Spider Man kind of villains, but kinda not. They're they're they they sit in that weird gray area. Not like Deadpool where like he is both. They just sit in a weird gray area where they're never like important enough to be elaborated on. So they're either A, Hydro Man, Magma Man, or um the Elementals. Yeah, I was actually thinking pretty much the same thing, um, but <laughs> funny enough. Or, behind one of my seat, they're all illusions because that's how Mysterio works. <laughs> that's true, but also, another thing I kind of brought up in my, uh, reveal, like, my reaction to the trailer. You know, oh, I don't watch your... Uh, I know, but you know how in, <laughs> um, Sam Raimi Spider-Man, where Sandman was able to absorb some of the water, yeah, he turned into, like, a mud thing? But, I yeah. thought that big-ass, like, water form was actually sandman i even said yo is that even sandman because i thought he was like somehow like doing small bits of mud in the water but obviously later on i kind of looked into the trailer more I and, man. and i uh kind of went to the conclusion that's not sandman uh that would have been yeah. cool though if they kind of did introduce him again yeah. but nah i don't know also this new suit who i love this new suit for spider-man it's freaking amazing oh the um the noir suit that we see it, well is it well, noir reminiscent of, it, it looks very reminiscent of the noir just without like the flapping oh but yeah well it, it just seemed like a toned down noir suit yeah, that's true. And it looks more like, um, I don't know, like, I want to say militaristic. Like, he's got, he looks pretty big, buff-wise. <laughs> I'm thinking it's, um, I'm thinking it's something that S.H.I.E.L.D. is quote-unquote, or Nick Fury, because, as we know, S.H.I.E.L.D. is dead. Thank you, Winter Soldier. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> But um. So are you gonna touch elbows and knees with your buddies? Or are you gonna no. So we we will see where that goes. Yeah. All right. So next topic of the day will be um. I want to say Bungie's split from Activision and what what do you think that's gonna do for Bungie? Like, do you think it's gonna be any better? Is it gonna make? I, I think I think they're going to trip, stumble, and then come out running. Obviously. <laughs> So this is obviously something huge for them, like they're now their own separate people, they now make their own decisions, they don't have to listen to Activision, but at the same time, that means I also have way less backing, so things are probably going to be tight for a little bit until we get like, oh, Destiny 3, no, don't quote me, I'm not confirming Des Destiny 3, I don't even think it's coming out soon, <laughs> if at all. But it's like, I feel like, I feel like we'll get something great out of them. Because they've, they've been known for some great things. The Halo, some of the Halo games. I don't remember exactly which ones. That's more your area. But Destiny 1, Destiny 2 were both great games despite their flaws. So I, th I think you'll get something good. Yeah, I was actually kind of hoping if they did like ever. This is back like last year, year or two, back when Destiny 1. Um, if they ever split from Activision... Oh, that's more than two years ago. That's more than two years ago. Well, yeah, it is, like, two and some change, but, um... Yeah. If they ever split from Activision, would they ever go back to Microsoft? I kind of would hope for that, because their coupling was Microsoft to make all the Halos 1 through Reach was amazing. Obviously, my personal favorite is Halo 2 for the story and Halo 3 for the multiplayer, but, like, come on. Those are some pretty good games. Yeah. 
I, I never personally played through the earlier ones, like, I actually played through, I didn't hop in the Reach hype, and then I played through most of Five's story, and then I mainly played just through the, um, multiplayer, because two plays Halo 5 for the story, am I right? <laughs> <laughs> so I, I was never I never got to truly experience the bungee effect on Halo, but but I've only heard great things, especially coming from you. Yeah, like I I'm a huge Halo fan, everyone knows this. I've did Halo on my channel strictly for almost a year straight. Yeah. So obviously I'm a huge Halo I fan. I think that's back when I first started subscribe like I think that's back when I first subscribed to you was because you were doing like Halo montages and stuff. Uh, yeah. So, not the, my best work, but it's there. Um. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was not bad. Was not bad. But nah, uh, I personally think the whole Bungie split from Activision. I think it is actually going to be better for Bungie's uh, games in the future because apparently they have a new IP coming out. Possibly, I, no, I'm not. I, I'm spacing on the year, but I have a feeling it's coming out in 2020. <laughs> One uh, year away. Ooh, yeah. When 2020 was so far. I know, like two years ago, just geez, but um, side note. <laughs> but uh, side note. hopefully this will actually make the whole Eververse like microtransaction stuff a lot lighter, and people will actually accept them for what they are, because then they know at least Activision is not trying to shove them down their throat. Yeah. Um, but even then, microtransactions are just a bad thing. They should never be in games, but a publisher has to Some do. Some games, I feel like. They can really use microtransactions, especially in like the little lighter games like Candy Crush and like Clash of Clans, those things where it's like there's not like huge competitive leagues built behind them, you know, it's just fun things to play. But when you get games like Star Wars Battlefront 2, Destiny 2, Destiny 1, Call of Duty, things like Call of Duty, especially where there's like where these actual Michael transactions can Michael transactions. <laughs> The microtransactions can actually affect how Black Ops 3 you could get like guns from those microtransactions, and where it's it's just I feel like it shouldn't be something that can actually your game and affect how good you really are. Like how I know Fortnite eek, but how Fortnite's done their entire thing is just you know yeah and. Obviously, I'm kind of tired of Fortnite. I think a lot of people are getting kind of tired of Fortnite, even though the player base is still massive. Fortnite is kind of, quote-unquote, revolutionizing the whole microtransaction stuff, because a lot of games lately have been doing a battle pass, or of that sort, uh, to get cosmetic, co like, what, cosmetic camos and gear and... Obviously, I think games, like, if it's a AAA game and it's going to have a microtransaction, make it to where it's only, only, and I sh can't stress enough, only cosmetic. If it's anything more, if it's a gun, like in Call of Duty for the past, what, four years? It's been mm. <laughs> microtransactions for a gun, which, yes, it changes the playing field of the meta and everything, and it can easily change the meta because it's an actual weapon with different stats. Oh, they wait. You know what I just realized? We're talking microtransactions. You know what game's shooting itself in the goddamn near right now because of microtransactions? What? Hmm. <clears throat> Fallout 76. <laughs> yeah. That's... Uh, let's, just, let's just use it as a segue into Fallout 76. So, uh. Let's just point out they have, like, spray paint, like, their camos and stuff that they're selling for pointing that out on top of how much they've already screwed over everyone else who tried to buy their better version of the game or like what was it like the collector's edition try some Nintendo edition something like that yeah and also back it's old news now but when the whole um player info got released like all the personal info their mailing address their like actual bank accounts were out to the public uh, for a short amount of time, but uh, Fallout 24, 76. Whoops, sorry. Um, <laughs> they, I don't, no, nah, they just, they're not doing anything good. 
Bethesda, they, you guys can do better. We all know this. Back when Doom, back when your earlier Fallout games, I'm not a huge Fallout fan, but your earlier Fallout games were a lot better. And so it, it depends on what you're calling the early ones. Are you calling three the early ones? Or you're calling one and two because one and two were completely different, man. Well, no, for this version of Fallout, I'm going with New Vegas and three. Mm -hmm. Um, particularly probably didn't three come out before New Vegas. Mm -hmm. New Vegas was originally a mod for 3 and then it kind of became its own game officially sponsored and everything. Great. Yeah. That's why New Vegas came so quickly out after 3 because it was just. Yeah. But, um. You know, I just. Bethesda can obviously do a whole lot better. With, they've already gotten online services with Elder Scrolls before, so I don't know why they can just kind of fix up some shit and kind of port it into a fallout version because elder scrolls is just fine elder scrolls online it's just because how different fallout is as a game well yeah but i'm talking about like server-wide stuff because you can call in nukes and it would crash a server for a couple of hours <laughs> like come on you this is bethesda we're talking about they can obviously do way better for servers at least uh and that B-E-T-A, the whole quote-unquote beta shit, nah, that, that was not a beta, that was a, here's the full game, this is what we're giving to you, and we're just gonna let you play it for like three hours at a time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's some, I don't know, just that whole debacle kind of rubbed me the wrong way. <laughs> debacle. But, um, there's also like the, um, like the dev room that was just found in Fallout 7. Because you don't really follow Fallout too much, but the, recently, like a dev room was found by a bunch of like glitchers and like hackers, and it had every item in the game plus a bunch of other stuff that is yet. To, so like, give, just giving some insight to the new DLC, which wouldn't be, ha which wouldn't have happened if they actually had secure servers and they actually weren't kicking people who weren't glitching and were kicking people who weren't. It's no dev room was found. And it had some things I hadn't seen. It had an NPC in it, though. That's what everyone was pretty mad about, though. Since there's no actual NPC in Fallout, like Fallout 76, because but then there was an NPC in the dev room, so it was really strange. Yeah, and obviously, if they can get that NPC out into the wild, I don't know why they couldn't have done that way back when the game just released. Mm -hmm. That was a huge, regarding regarding like the lackluster story, if there really is one. The yeah, whole there really isn't. It's just how to get out of the thing. The only good story could really be said is Mothman. Moth. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, like if they could have at least replaced the robots with some NPCs, that would have made the game at least two percent better. <laughs> yeah. So, but they didn't, so... Yeah, that, they oh, really well. they really shot themselves in the foot on that one. Pretty much. Um, what's next? What's next on my list? Talk about... Um, well, I guess sticking with games that are currently out. Let's go into the Minecraft snapshot. Yes! Because you and I both play Minecraft. And we both have that server. Yeah, or uh... you do. I'm just kind of there. <laughs> Nah. Dying every couple days. <laughs> <laughs> hey, no, I died earlier today, so... Yeah. Just, uh, just to give some background detail into what happened, I had been, I had left to do something, but I was still on the server because I had been working on my little township that I've built, and as because of not recent reason, but um, recently enough, there was the whole, like, phantom things up to that way, like, if you don't sleep for, like, three days phantoms or like these little demon bats that will try and come kill you and i hadn't realized i'd already hit the time timer so i left for i don't know i call it five six minutes and i came back and i was dead and i lost everything i had like the enchanted diamond tool tools and armory a light straight with i was set and then i died <laughs> that was fun <laughs> <laughs> but yeah you gotta watch out for those little buggers though they'll uh pop up on you out of nowhere <laughs> yes but no so the new um the what is it uh 19 19... 
point oh something something. Nineteen W point oh three or some shit like that. Yeah, it, yeah. it was just released today. Oh, yeah. oh they, yesterday. They another one today. Yeah, it was just a bug oh. fix. It wasn't really much. So yeah, it was released the other day. Let's say that yeah, like maybe a day or two. Because there was the audio file updates where like they went and added in and changed a bunch of sounds and they redid the uh, fire pit because people were getting mad because it was like a half slab with a fire texture. Yeah. Yeah. That kind of, that personally kind of bothered me. Like, this is Mojang. Obviously, they don't really have microtransactions. You just buy the game and that's that for Mojang, at least on Java Edition. Um, so obviously content is going to be a little bit slower um <laughs> which everyone can understand it's minecraft we're talking about but they have been slowing down on their content releases but at the same time the content releases that they do have are pretty good from the drop from the hop from 112 to 113 dude the uh, aquatic update is amazing very true and there is so much in the update that everyone has hyped for at least a couple months that was an amazing update, and I still love it. Mm -hmm. I can't wait for 114. Um, the, the village and pillage update, as it's being called. Yeah, and we finally get our bamboo and our um, pandas. Pandas are nice. I'm, I'm on the fence about them. We'll see. Yeah, but still, something it's something new for the Java edition, which we don't have yet. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Um. But the huge controversial part of the newest snapshots is the fire, the fire pit, or the, yeah, fireplace, and it was a slab. <laughs> like it was just a retextured slab. It was junky. It had at least some functionality to it, but it was a slab, and I hated that. So many people hated it. Uh, what are your thoughts on it being a slab? I've, I've been around Minecraft for a long time, like, I think out of most current day players, I've been around for longer than most, including some of these YouTubers, but it's just, I, I, I don't care, really, I just thought it was cool because we were getting something new, uh, just, I, I've been around since there was only one type of tree, and, yeah, yeah no, it, it's, that just dates me already. <laughs> Back in what early beta phase? I don't know. I'm gonna search this up now. I'm actually slightly interested. <laughs> but no, as of recently, I believe as of the 16th, um, they changed it from a slab to an actual fire, like an actual fire pit, and it looks so, so, so much better. They fixed a the thing where I think it was a bug where after a while, if it was in your hotbar, it actually crashed your game. Uh, because it had an animation in your hotbar, they took the animation out, so it hopefully will fix that bug. There's no animation to crash the game anymore. Um, they made it a three tier. It's slightly bigger than a slab. It's basically a still like height of a slab. It's slightly bigger, but it has three pieces. It's got the embers on the bottom, and it's got two stacks of wood. And they even put an animation on the wood of it burning, and it's so cool looking. And I personally am extremely happy that they went from a basic slab design retextured with fire on top of it to an actual like fire pit, and it's so cool. The whole um, actually something to look at, you know. Yeah, and they also switched the light level of it from nine to fifteen. So if you're trying to use it as a light source, oh, so now it's a now it's a full light source. Yeah, it's it can cook food, four pieces of food. Um, and it's a light source, so it's actually pretty useful, and it just looks nice. It's something that we've been wanting for years, and we finally got it. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, so, also, they added, um, new sounds in the game, like, updated sounds for crops and stuff, and then they also added a, uh, compost bin, <laughs> and that's another problem, uh, currently with the people that are playing Minecraft. I've yet to mess with it but apparently it's crappy like very crappy um it's very iffy on certain foods that it'll even take fill up a tier out of eight tiers and apparently it'll take 168 pieces of wheat to fill it up and all you get is one bone meal 
You lost me for a second. I was doing research on how old I've been playing Minecraft. What are we talking about? I just heard extreme wheat numbers. <laughs> I got minorly <laughs> So, the compost bin. <laughs> Don't mind me, I too. Yeah, no. I was talking about the compost bin. Um. Oh, oh, oh yeah. I've heard, I've heard many good things about this and how it's revolutionizing farming the car. Yeah, you obviously tuned out a little too much. It's not revolutionizing anything. It's 168 oh. pieces of wheat to fill up the compost bin for one piece of bone meal. Well, that is the opposite of good. Yeah, and people are really, really pissed off about it. People are already making tons of charts and sending it to Mojang, or Mojang, however you want to pronounce it, but they're sending it to them oh, and saying like different charts of like rates like instead of the 10 percent for wheat putting it up at least a 30 and yeah. that would obviously help but if it was just a one for one it would one make it a lot more user friendly you'd get more um bone meal out of the eight pieces of whatever food you put in it and it's also what a compost bin is in real life everything put in it gets put to use it's not a like a ninety percent chance, a fifty like fifty percent chance or anything. It's just one hundred percent. It's being used. Yeah. So I don't know. I would kind of like that. Um, if they actually like made compost bins to work, like actually without not being sucky. Yeah, and I would actually kind of like if they added that. Uh, I don't really know how they would do this. It would be like an area of effect type thing from the block itself. So they'll have to add more coding and stuff. But a lot of people are saying this where if you put it in a farm, it helps a certain general area of the farm grow faster. That would definitely be helpful. Yeah. I actually kind of thought that's how it already worked because that's how it would make the most sense. <laughs> yeah, but no, oh, I don't, that's not. Jesus Christ, I was out of the loop for a minute. <laughs> Yeah, no, that that's not how it works. I kind of wish it did because that's obviously not what a compost bin in real life does. But in every other video game, it does that. So, like Ark, it does that. Um, no, I tried, I tried playing Ark for a little bit. I, I never really got into it. it. Wasn't my cup of tea, I guess. I I like the blocky nature of Minecraft. Yeah, that's true, but I don't know. Just the whole thing for 114 is really hyping me up we haven't seen anything for foxes just yet i think those are all going i think that's all going to get released in one um snapshot where it like introduces how berries are actually working and what we can do with them and are updated to, what is that i think that's the tiga biome taiga i think T T screw you huh? well no <laughs> yeah but um that was the tiga biome like an actually fully updated version of it, so that way we can actually see what's going to be in it, how it's going to look. Yeah. So, I, don't I don't know. I just can't wait for 114. They okay. haven't put a, an official release date for it, which kind of sucks, but... It, uh, tameable foxes, question mark? That would be cool. Wait, hold on. Wouldn't you think they would work similar to Dogzo? Or would they add something else to it? I don't know, because it, it's a fox. I think the way that a fox would work like if if it was me being a dev the way i would would make fox is i would like make them so like they're tameable like you'd have to use like meat instead of like how like dogs use bones mm -hmm. with a wolf you'd use meat eat like you know like on a fox yeah but then similar to how like the cat you know it like chases away um creepers you know how creepers are well, if the fox, like, uh, like it specifically went hunting and killed things in your radius and brought it back and kind of like dropped it at you, similar to how villagers. So, like, say you're walking around exploring with a fox, if it just kind of went out and naturally killed animals, and like the draw, I think that'd be kind of cool. That'd actually be a pretty interesting implementation. It'd be like a hunting wolf, you know? Yeah, and and some it's kind of funny. Um, like some Disney movies or like younger kid movies, Fox is always like a good thing and mm -hmm. they're kind of always shaped up next to dogs and dogs basically like a hunting hound. Those would go spot out stuff, kill it and bring it back to you. Yeah. 
uh, or if you've already killed it, it would go and grab it and bring it back. So mm -hmm. that would actually be a pretty cool impl implementation, but wouldn't that mean it would have to have an inventory space? And that would be kind of weird on an no, animal? No, no, that's what I'm saying. It would work like a villager, you know, because how villagers like throw things between each other. It would kill something and then it would throw the item at you. Like it would throw, um, say it killed a pig, it would pick up the, um, the uncooked pork and it would like just throw it at you. Oh, okay. So yeah, that would actually be a pretty cool impl implementation. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, mm. I'll end it out. Infdev. I've been playing Minecraft since Infdev. Damn. What year That's did that come out? 2010. Or, or like it's late 2009, early 2010. Jesus Christ! All right. Uh, yeah. So, uh, Infdev is February 27. 7th 30th of 2010 it was right around when I started playing Jesus ow <laughs> alright well uh, let's get into the next subject glass it's something I have yet to watch I haven't watched anything of the series yes, 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 but yes. you say you have um enlighten me yes so this is a um Glass is building on to the um, screenwriter director M. Night Shyamalan's original movie of Unbreakable, which was came out 2000. Actually, I think it was like just actually 2000. And then he came out with another movie, like I think 2016, called um, Splint, which had uh, oh, fuck, something McCoy. Just another actor okay and nobody knew what these two movies were related because M. Night Shyamalan at that point had already made himself a name in movie industry he, like Spielberg you know, acclaimed people knew him they liked his work but essentially they end up tying the two together and the general idea behind them is that there are people in the world that have these unique powers like superpowers like he's creating his own kind of like DC universe Marvel universe where with Unbreak it was uh main character was played by Bruce Will and his entire thing was, was super strong. Like he could he, he could punch through walls, but he's human. Like he, he wasn't like the whole Colossus, um he didn't look like really buff, you know? Yeah. But then in Split, um the main character uh what was that guy? Um, James McAvoy. James McAvoy plays this person who apparently has like, it's like 22, 23 different personalities all in one person. And each of them is like different. Like one's a lady, one has OCD, one's like a seven year old. And at first we don't see the connection to the original movie because the original movie was all about, okay, this guy's really strong. He tries to help people where he can. But then there's this one personality called um the beast and, and the beast is super strong super fast and vulnerable we see him take like scatter shot shotgun to the chest and keep walking the dude can climb up walls like spike dude and at first we still don't see the connection because it's just like okay this movie's really cool it's going into what um multiple personality disorder could be what like it is you know playing with the rules of regular science but then the very end the very end of the movie we see uh, I just said his name but we see a nod to Unbreakable in the very end with Bruce Willis and that just tied the two movies together in the span of about 10 seconds it's the greatest thing anyone has ever seen and now they're making what uh, we're assuming is the final movie to it called Glass, involving characters from both the movie and lesser characters from the both movies together to tie all together, which is superpowers, heroes, villains, and his own, like, hero, villain, and good guy, bad guy. Alright, alright. Yes. <laughs> I, know, I know, that was a bit of a, bit of a rant, but th there was a lot to it. This has been spanning 19 years. Yeah, it's it's pretty big. Apparently, it's gonna be huge. And didn't it just come out today? It uh it did. Well, probably not today when this is being uploaded. 
Uh, yeah, yeah. this will probably be uploaded in a day or two. Yeah, the 18th is when this movie comes out today. And I haven't seen it yet, but before I have you go see it, we're going to make sure you sit down and at least watch Split, because I've already looked at some of the reviews for it, and people are saying that Glass is just an ex with a little... Free watch split and we might touch unbreakable but that um no but it's a great great idea so far and i personally love split as a movie so we're gonna have you dive into that all right cool cool <laughs> <laughs> and now now that i've gone on my little rant you have a rant for me regarding um i think mortal kombat 11 yeah mortal kombat 11 dude i sat okay so I was, okay, here's my little story. So I was actually going on and just playing on Minecraft on the server, actually. And then I got a tweet, both, well, a tweet and a notification on uh, YouTube that IGN was going live. I'm like, oh shit, I'm gonna look it up. And it actually was the release, like, showing, gameplay showing for Mortal Kombat 11. And this game, whew. So we all seen that uh, re reveal trailer back at, what, E3 2018 or some shit? Like, couple months ago uh, i don't watch three i'm not a nerd oh well okay well <laughs> it was revealed i think a couple months ago i believe it was e3 2018 don't quote me on that but okay i won't <laughs> dude it looks so good obviously it was pre-rendered for the most part it was pre-rendered and that song was terrible but the trailer itself was good well, yesterday they had a live stream. It was a couple of hours long, but the main portion of it was 36 minutes, I think. And, oh, I am hyped. I cannot wait. If you take the graphics of Mortal Kombat 10 on PC, on the ultra graphics, like the highest fidelity graphics, and bump them up like four more times, that's Mortal Kombat 11. It's insane looking on how good it is. And... We're getting a couple of fan favorites back. Baraka? Yeah, I said Baraka. I, I love Baraka so, so much. And then, I forgot her name, but um, she's this red chick and can, she, she can control blood. Uh, uh, Scarlet. Scarlet. Yeah. She was Combat 9. That was one of the last, last ones that I actually played. I, I dabbled, but... Uh, being, being the old arcade game buff that I am, uh, Mortal Kombat 2 was her first. That, and she was also last revealed in a DLC for Mortal Kombat 9. Yeah. But, um, yeah, no, she's in the game, so that's a really nice introdu introduction, like, reintroduction for her. But she, we haven't seen her since, what, 2010? 2011, close 2011. enough. 2011. And then, obviously, yeah, because uh, that she was the, uh, um, DLC. But yeah, and then also, we have a female real-life badass playing, um, fuck, Sonya Blade. Oh, I heard about this. Um, what was her name? Ronda Rousey. Yeah, that- I heard about that one. That's insane, dude. We have a real-life badass playing an in-game badass, and yeah, no, that, that that's pretty sick for me. Um, I, ha I have one problem with this entire situation, though. What's that? Johnny Cage hasn't been confirmed yet. <laughs> uh, uh, I'm pretty sure he's going to be in the game. He has yet to be in the game since, what, Mortal Kombat 6? I do not know how long he's been around. But, yeah. But he, he is a long-time favorite. And obviously, uh, I have no doubt that they're going to keep, like, Scorpion and Sub-Zero raiding those guys because they're, like, core uh, yeah, they're like the whole stance. Obviously, with every new Mortal Kombat, it's either Sub Zero, Scorpion, Raiden, or who? I think it's Liu Kao in uh, Mortal Kombat Eight that, or some shit. But um, yeah, no, I'm hyped. This that this game is just amazing. Uh, oh, wasn't there a new character that was also released as well? Um, like uh. Garrus, like, yes. It's like the um Doomfist looking guy that he's a robot. <laughs> yeah, no. Let's, let's be honest, it's complete robot um Detroit become human doom. 
Yeah, Loki. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but Gears, he's actually pretty sick. He's actually a new character in Mortal Kombat 11. And some of his movesets, he's more on the slower side, but he's a heavy, heavy hitter. Okay. Um... Well, that's obviously not someone I'm going to be playing because <laughs> I prefer my Johnny Cage uh, do the splits punch you in the. <laughs> yeah, this is true, but uh, no. Nah, to back put him from nine, like Sub Zero's sword spam. That shit pissed me off. So to put him in perspective, <laughs> um, Leatherface from Mortal Kombat 10 mixed with a little bit of um, like faster move, like hitting. But the movement is about the same. Like he he walks slow, but his hits are almost as big as um Goro, the forearm dude. Goro. I forgot his name or some shit. But yeah, Goro. Yeah, but no, he hits hard as fuck like him, but he moves kind of slow like a Leatherface. So it's like a weird mix, but it looks so good and it suits the character a lot. Okay, okay. Who do you think are going to be our, uh, um, four visiting characters for this game? Ooh, okay, uh... Because last game we had Leatherface, Jason Voorhees, and wasn't it Predator and Alien? Alien and Predator, yeah. So who do you think our four, uh, visiting fighters for this game are going to be? To be honest, I have no idea. There was um, some... People are saying that spawn's going to be. We're going to get spawn. That'd be so nice. That should be interesting. But then again, spawn is also heavy magic based. It means they'd have to then make some sort of counter for him. Yeah, and there was also a couple. I want to say last year, but it was more like a four or five months ago of rumors of Killer Instinct characters coming into Mortal Kombat and vice versa. Maybe we might get a Killer Instinct Ooh, visitor. I played Killer Instinct actually not too long ago, so that would be interesting. I, I genuinely enjoyed playing Killer Instinct by the um. So slight product plug for Killer Instinct. Uh, play, play sponsor. <laughs> yeah, no. Killer Instinct is a pretty uh, decent game, but not. Nah, there was some rumors. It, it was. It was really fun. It was really fun. Yeah, but there are some rumors. I don't remember which characters, but there were some rumors about the whole, like, Killer Instinct players would come over to Mortal Kombat, and then vice versa. That would be actually pretty interesting, because Killer Instinct had the whole Halo for Arbiter uh, visitor thing yes, for that, yes. because Microsoft got some license for them. Uh, and then, didn't they get Sonic, I think? Mm -hmm. Or was... I forget the other character, but it was some game that you wouldn't think of added into Killer Instinct, but it was there, and so I have a feeling, even though Mortal Kombat is more of a serious uh, fighting game and stuff, they have their quirkiness, they add some random characters, like we never thought out of all people for visitors, Alien and Predator would be in the game, yeah. but they suited I thought, I thought so well. Funny they gave us both of them though. Yeah, like obviously, it was in the same pack too, it was just what the double XL or some shit. Um, Here you go. yeah, but I don't know. Those are like some wacky characters to put in a fighting game, like as serious as Mortal Kombat. But at the same time, they suited the game so well. Jason Voorhees and also Freddy Krueger back in Combat 9. That was pretty fucking funny. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, nah, I... The new, the possible mystery characters and shit, uh, for visiting, like, from other franchises and stuff, I have no idea who they would add, other than Spawn. Um, but I am interested in, like, who they would add in, because it is a very interesting topic. Mm -hmm. But, um... We will see. We can only wait at this point. Yeah. But, uh, alright, so our next topic will be Alita Battle Angel, and the trailers have oh, actually yeah. been looking pretty Alita damn Battle good. Angel. Yes, I've seen this in a couple places. I just want to point out one thing. I think you already know what it is. CGI? <laughs> it, it is along the line of CGI. The this is 100% Ready Player One 2. <laughs> I can see CGI looks so similar. I can, see, the angel, the eyes. I can see the connection in that, and to be honest, it, that's not even a bad connection because Ready Player One yeah, was a pretty damn good movie. 
Uh, it, it was nothing like the book, but God, it was still a good movie. Oh yeah. Spielberg did great props to that man. <laughs> yeah, but no, this movie. I've been seeing seeing trailers from what mid 2018 that the trailers have been out for that long. Oh, I have no idea. I I only started seeing it recently, so I could not tell you to save my life. Yeah, but no, I could have sworn I saw some um, trailers back in like mid to old like late almost fourth quarter 2018, but I'm not quite sure. Um. But not like these trailers have been looking good. Like her, uh, I don't even know what type of game that is, but they're like it's a battle game. But they're wearing like armor. Her armor looks like football gear, and that's low key sick of shit. <laughs> well, because so I think the entire thing is revolving around she's like an android. Like what I've picked from the trailer so far is that she's like an android, but she's the best android, and everyone else is they're okay, but they're not good. So because she's such a badass, it's all like fifth element. You know, I don't know if you ever watched. Up, uh, Bruce Willis, another Bruce Willis movie. <laughs> uh, two, two. I'm not quite sure if I've watched it. The entire thing was that the fifth element was this, and she was like human gene in its purest form, and she had power, but she didn't. But she was important because rich people wanted her. That makes her important. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty much it. Um, um, but no, it looks really good, and I'm interested because she she put some dude through. Yeah, and also the, <laughs> <laughs> the CGI is looking pretty good on it, though. Since it's basically 100% CGI, they did a really good job. Some of those shots in the trailer are pretty amazing. Yes, yes, they are. So I'm wondering if it's CGI rendered around something else, or if it's people in suits being rendered into an area. Yeah. Didn't they do that with Ready Player One though? Uh, yes, they did. Yes, real time, did. or whatever it's called. Um, yeah, like real time CGI animatics or something like that. Yeah, they do it in video games and all the time. But yeah, no. Um, I have a feeling it's basically 100% CGI. But if they do have some like action shots where there's just people like being CGI'd over, that'd be pretty interesting. It would make it more human for some of the characters. Uh, but. I don't know. I am kind of excited for the movie. I wasn't quite into it when the first trailers first came out. Um, it was just one of those YouTube trailers like, oh, here we go. Shove this down your throat. Yeah, but it. the more I'm watching it and the more I see this, the trailers over and over again, it's like they're slightly intriguing me more and more. Yeah. And it's... Good, good job, YouTube ads. Um, you're doing your job. <laughs> a little bit yeah they're doing the job pretty well but no it is it is shipping out to be a pretty decent movie and i actually can't wait for it to come out yes um so speaking of new things and things to come out um i know the other day you were telling me about anthem and the last of us 2 because those were both things you apparently you will look yeah, so since I actually got my PS4 and I played The Last of Us 1, I didn't play the full game. Uh, give me some, give me a break. The game is amazing, but I haven't played the full game. But I have played enough to at least get the majority of the story. Spider Man, I don't want to hear it. It's a good game. Leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> like I said in my review for Spider Man Far From Home, if that new suit isn't in Spider Man PS4 after the movie drops, I'm gonna get pissed. I'm gonna start tweeting. I'm gonna start tweeting. I'm gonna, I'm gonna. I'm gonna pull some shit on some Twitter, so yeah. Oh but no, um, The Last of Us 2, I'm gonna start off with that one and I go to Anthem after. The Last of Us 2 is shipping out to be. We haven't really seen too, too much from the trailers, other than the same trailer, I believe. There's only been two different trailers, but the, the main thing is it looks fantastic. And the anti alias scene, the graphics mainly. It's looking incredible, and there's also some leaks for the newer consoles, like the PS5 might possibly have ray tracing in it. PS5, please stop. <laughs> well, no, like, it hurts, the, it whole, think about. the whole rumor of the PS5 possibly having ray tracing, specifically because of the new Gran Turismo that's been leaked. And Gran Turismo is a PSN exclusive, and it's possibly having ray tracing. So... <laughs> if all that goes into plan, I don't know why I'm huffing. <laughs> I don't even play. I play Forza. I'm the Xbox half of the car games, but no, like 
if the PS5 is like all the leaks are true and it does have ray tracing to some degree, I think any of the games back like on the PSN network and especially The Last of Us 2 will look so good. Since we can't get PC ports of it or no Xbox One X ports of it, we can't see how raw power of a GPU can do it. But that'll be very, very interesting. And I can't wait for it to come out. You know, I would totally be with you on all that, except neither of those games interest me. <laughs> Rip. Alright, well, uh, yeah, no, I can't wait for The Last of Us 2 to come out. It's looking great. The story is going to be amazing anyway, regardless. Because the story for The Last of Us 1, it, it got to so many people's hearts. And it was just a 10 out of 10 game in almost anyone's book who ever played it, so... Yeah. Yeah, it's... No. I can't wait for the second one. Only thing I can say I'm truly looking forward to in a game, it's a mod for Fallout 4 called uh, Fallout Miami. I've heard of the whole thing. Is that still happening? Is that actually going to be coming it's out? It's still happening. They're still... Because they're essentially just taking the Fallout assets and making... Like the Fallout 4 assets, making their own, and then running with it. It is still happening. They have like a soundtrack and everything. I can't wait for that because I've actually been kind of hyped. I'm not, again, I'm not a huge Fallout f like fan. But it looked so good. There was well, yeah, no, fire that will probably make me download Fallout 4 again because I want to play that and I heard about that since what, early 2018 that when that was all released? Yeah, yes, easily. Late 2017. Yeah, that would has been about a year and some change, or a year easily, for that teaser that came out. And yes. it was looking fantastic. So that will actually get me to download Fallout 4 again. Control. Uh, <laughs> oh, wait, sorry. Wrong, wrong game. Fallout game. <laughs> wrong game. But no, I can't wait for that game to come out, though, or that mod. Uh,. Because it's a full-fledged it's, mod. It's, it's, it's going to be its own full-fledged game, let's be honest here. It's completely changing the way that Fallout 4 is going. True, and so, if the mod I itself does to it, though. if the mod does good enough, we all know Bethesda will buy it, it out and make it official. <laughs> well, they really will. That's exactly what they did with um, New Vegas. New Vegas yeah. <laughs> yeah, no. Because New Vegas was the first one done on that side of the country. True. It was but um, but um, yeah, so let's get on to the Anthem topic. Again, people Anthem. are hating on the game. People are hating on it specifically because it's one EA, two Bioware, which made Andromeda, which was not the best game. I, I give it that, but... I could successfully say I finished all of Andromeda. Don't judge me. All right. I'm not judging you. There's some very interesting stuff in there, but okay. <laughs> Yeah, no, back when I was still uh, chilling in Vegas, I managed to get my hands on Andromeda, and I played through all of it, and I enjoyed it, so. Screw, screw everyone who didn't like Andromeda. <laughs> nah, it, I liked Andromeda, <laughs> and I don't get the whole hate of it, and it's a Destiny clone, Um, but I like Destiny. I that fucking back. <laughs> well, no, it's basically a Destiny <laughs> clone, uh, and uh, I'm fine with that. I actually really am fine with it. Um, and but it's so much more. Well, no, it kind of really is. Like, okay, so the story might <laughs> He's not like, be you know the what? It, it, it's just Destiny. That's all it is. It's just Destiny. The story might not be there 100. percent We haven't really seen too much about the story. But if it's just a Destiny clone with a possible better story, I am 100% on board. And it's looking fantastic, to be honest. Anything with story, I will play. I, I'm, I'm a sucker for good story games. It's like multiplayer has lost its shine these days. Yeah, and I cannot wait for the game to come out. And it's having a... They actually are... Okay, so I give Bioware some props. They're actually calling the quote-unquote early access a demo. So they can clearly like state that it is a demo. This is a small part of the game, and it's not going to be finished. We get that. But we hope you guys enjoy, and this is going to test some servers. I am perfectly fine with that. If they called it an early access, 
or called it a beta. I, I, I'm kind of getting tired <laughs> of this whole beta thing because people are using beta or early access as a way of sneaking in early product that's not finished and having people and still getting people to pay for it. Yeah, for full price. And mm -hmm. a lot of games are doing that now lately, and it's really, really annoying. A lot of people are saying this, like, yeah, they have pretty good incentives, unlike Fallout, but... You know what? I'll <laughs> have you know, I managed to reach max level in Fallout really quickly just because of a stupid frag grenade switch. There was a specific grenade bouquet that you could go to and just keep picking grenades off it and because you're disarmed, and it kept giving you this little amount of experience and then you can get up to max level if you have the time and patience which i yeah but the whole pre-order <laughs> bonus and the whole I, I, centennial the thing that they massively screwed up that bag was not canvas and yeah. that nuka cola dark was plastic in certain casing glass yeah that wasn't a pre-order bonus but they still screwed up on that as well but from Fallout in particular, and a lot of games lately, it's starting to make me want to not pre-order games, even if it, they do have extra perks, strictly because Fallout 74, it had me semi-hyped when all the promos were coming out for it. But when the game came out, good thing I didn't buy it, but when the game came out, it was shit. Like, it was 100% yeah. shit. The servers were down. Um, just constantly, people leaked info they got into areas that they weren't supposed to and then granted that's technically boosting or hacking so bethesda did kick the people but they're also kicking people that they weren't supposed to kick and all that but that, that that's where they keep messing up right there yeah but um i don't know just the bethesda's fucked up we already covered that earlier so back to anthem if it's a <laughs> destiny clone I am 100% on board, regardless if it doesn't have the best story. Division didn't have the best story, really, at all, like, or best gameplay. The, the Division, I, I, I never could, like, really... I didn't follow The Division too much. Like, I tried playing it a couple times, but it's, like, the beginning bits, I feel, are just too monotonous. It, it wasn't something I could stick with for long periods of time. Yeah, and I can see that, but I played it for at least a solid couple of weeks just to get like maybe a total of 24 however however ghost recon wildlands was a great game yes yes it was i actually really loved that game i basically completed the game before i gave up on it only because i was running it strictly off of my computer and my computer isn't the best computer but at the same t time unless you have like let's say a 2070 you're not getting a solid 60 on that game, no matter what the fuck you run, so... Just because of how, like, detailed and how much they tr tried in that game. And I, I'm so glad they did, because that game came out great. It had a great story. You could do so much with it. You could customize what you did, how you did it, why you did it, when. And it just made the game that much better. Yeah, and I really like that about that game. But, um... But yeah, like I said, it, Anthem, I'm already 100% on board. I'm not going to pre-order strictly because I've already, with everything that's going on, everyone's getting cheated out on stuff. And a lot of games now lately haven't been releasing 100%. So coming from me and coming from a lot of other people, don't pre-order. Wait at least a week <laughs> after the game has came out. Let the initial reviews roll out and yes. then make your decision. Because... Don't get me wrong, I love Black Ops 4, but the microtransactions, they weren't there in the beginning, which I loved, but a month later, they started adding in Black Market on PS4. What? Who doesn't love the Black Market? It's <laughs> so good in 3. Well, to give them props on it, though, it is, like, a lot more simple, and it's not... You, you're not gonna get crates. There are no crates, thank God. Whatever you see, you know you're getting, which is really good. They're pulling a Fortnite on that, like an Epic Games on that, which I give them props. That's really, really good idea. Just Epic Games, like, wow. It's a good thing to do, actually advertise what you're getting, and you get more than what you want. So you go and you look at all the skins. You buy what you want for the skin, but then you also get possibly some camos, you get some emotes, and you also get... Um, player icons for like your emblem and stuff like that 
all within it. Obviously, you have to do a little bit of challenges to earn the skin, so that kind of sucks. But it also but makes sense. But they make sense. it obtainable. Yeah, so. they. It's yeah. not like heavily grindy, grindy or anything. It's actually very obtainable. You can get your skin within maybe two or three games. And those two or three games, you can pull maybe a 20 frag if you're pretty decent at the game. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so they are doing it in a way where it's acceptable and it's reasonable. But at the same time, full on microtransactions on a $60 game. No one wants that. If it's a free to play, I get it. Warframe, Fortnite, fucking War of Tanks or World of Tanks Warframe? or some Warframe? Love that game. I love rolling up. And stabbing things and rolling away. <laughs> nah, it is a really fun, fast-paced game, but I don't know. Like, again, actually, hold on. With four Warframe, the loot cycle—it's not exactly like Destiny, but it is RNG, and I do like that for at least the RNG. cards to upgrade. Um, well, I do you hate insa me? <laughs> insane RNG? <laughs> I hate some of the exotics in Destiny One. Took forever to get. Um, but the I just want to point out that I got Skyburner's Oath within my first three exotics, Destiny 2. Yeah, it took me a solid, like, it almost, <laughs> it took me a solid almost a year to get that bitch, so, yeah. I also got the Tractor Cannon in my first, like, ever engram that I got from What's-Her-Name over on, I think that was Titan? Uh, from Sloan? Yeah, I got the Tractor Cannon the very first time. I was so proud of myself. Lucky ass bitch. All right, well. Yeah, no, I, I think our Randy actually did love me for that thing. <laughs> but yeah, no. Like I said, overall, Anthem. I'm on board. I'm just not gonna pre-order anything. I'm gonna wait maybe a couple days, maybe up to a week after it's released. If I have the cash, then I will buy. But um, yeah, that's gonna be ending our podcast. Uh, it's yeah, been that, actually. That's all. That's a all I've got for today. Unless you've got anything else. I got. I said what I wanted to piece and made my piece. So. <laughs> yeah, no, nah, I've. Uh, I think I've gotten all that I wanted off. Um, but yeah, I actually really enjoyed this. Just talking about what's going on with gaming, what's going on with just general news. We did some movies. We did some games. We went over movies. We went over games. Went over companies and. Yeah, yeah, we just had a pretty decent thing. So. I enjoyed this uh if you guys do as well definitely hit that like button for both of our videos and the subscribe button uh no, it'll you definitely you help us out i understand <laughs> <laughs> i understand well yeah but it definitely does help us out regardless so if you guys did want this to if you do want this con to continue and you did enjoy it uh just to throw it on the background just listen to two guys talk about some random shit video game related then uh, definitely hit the subscribe button on both of our accounts. Um, I'll have... I will, go to <laughs> I will go and have his link in the description box below if you guys want to go check that out so you can guys subscribe to him as well. And, and if you guys are watching it on mine, I will do the same for Unsounder here. But, uh, yeah. So, anything before we full-on end this? Um, no. I mean... I mean, we're, we're, uh, our official schedule that we're going to try to stick to is doing it over the weekend, so we'll probably be doing these sometime like Friday night, Saturday night, and so that way it can hopefully get posted by like Sunday morning, Sunday. So hopefully these should be getting uploaded once a week, every week on whatever's happening, any new things we think about, checking up on old topics that we've already talked about with any new information. No, other than that, it's like we, we've got our schedule, everyone knows, and that's all I've got. <laughs> Alright, well, uh, yeah, I can't really touch much on that. Obviously, our schedule is trying to get at least one, maybe two podcasts out a week. But that's really only if we have enough time, if there's a butt-ton of news as well. The only reason there would be two is just as forewarning, I'm a... Myself, I'm still a student, so the only reason there would be two is things such as breaks when I can be more on top of content. So, yeah. don't get don't, <laughs> don't get impatient. Yeah, but um, yeah, no, I can't really add much on that. Sooner or later, we'll be getting more people, and then just me and you. Hopefully, we can do that pretty soon here. Yeah, um, but for the most, I are the main attraction. 
Oh, wait, you know what? I realized this entire time. We didn't introduce what we decided to call the podcast. So I'm, I'm glad that we... Oh, shit. Yeah. Extend this. We, we are officially calling this the Night Shift Podcast because we do it at night because nighttime is the time for hoodlums and what have you. Yeah, it's uh, low-key, almost 9 o'clock. We started this around, like, what, 7.50, 7.40? Uh, something like that, yeah. And during the weekends, we might, depending on when we're actually getting up ready to go, we might end up recording this stuff almost at midnight. So, yeah, yeah that's the real... Night shift podcast. Yeah. Night shift, night shift, night shift. But, uh, <laughs> but, yeah, so hope you guys enjoyed. And as always, Unsounder out. Bye-bye.